tragic case of Faye Swetlick. It was a Monday afternoon on February 10th, 2020, and Case, South Carolina seemed as peaceful as always. Some people were still at work, the kids were home from school, and their parents were preparing dinner for them. So the streets were quiet and safe as far as Faye's mother, Selena Collins, knew. Faye Marie Swetlick was a bright and energetic first grader, and she had just returned home from Springdale Elementary School. The sun was shining and the weather was mild, uh -huh. a typical February day in South Carolina. <laughs> so Faye went to be out daddy. playing in the sun. At approximately 3.45 p.m., Faye was last seen playing in her front yard on London Dairy Lane in the Churchill Heights neighborhood of Case. Selena had been keeping an eye on her daughter from inside the house, checking on her periodically. At around 3.45 p.m., Selena realized she could no longer see Faye in the yard. At first, she wasn't overly concerned, assuming Faye might have... Like, hear about Faye's story and left me with a heavy heart as someone who basically the safety and... Of children is incoming troubling when such a thing occur it makes me reflect on how we can all play a part in ensuring our community or safety for our children. It's like, bro, why are you with really outside watching your kid? Why let me say this like at the fifth part, I'm not parent, but but the great part about it is if your kid is not old enough to like take care of itself, then you should be out there watching your kid. Why would you go be go and check behind blind like bro? Like come on, woman. Like that that would be a dumb thing you could ever done, woman wandered to a neighbor's yard or perhaps gone inside without her noticing. However, as the minutes ticked by and there was no sign of Faye, Selena's concern grew into panic. She immediately it's began searching for her daughter, calling fail. out to neighbors and fail. frantically you looking around the area. After about an hour of unsuccessful searching, with the sun blind. beginning to set and still no Why sign of Faye, Selena made the heart-wrenching call to 911 you do. You should be scared. It's your fault. You should be outside watching your kid, not inside watching your kid. Okay, mommy. She's gonna be seven in June. All right, all right. I'm gonna stand on the line with you, but I'm gonna get Casey KCPD on the line too. But I'm gonna stand on the line, so don't hang up, okay? Okay. Within minutes of calling 911, Case Department of Public Safety officers were on the case. Sirens blaring as they arrived in the quiet neighborhood. They immediately began what would become one of the most intensive searches in South Carolina's what, what recent history. The peaceful afternoon had uh -huh. suddenly transformed into a nightmare scenario, with the clock ticking and hopes pinned on finding Faye safe and sound. Flashback. Faye Marie Swetlick was born on June 9th, 2013 to Crazy Selena Collins power. and Chad Sweatman. From the moment she entered years. the world, this Faye year. brought That's joy crazy. and light to it's those like around dying. her. Described Listen. by her mother, if, if you explain your kid like that as six year old, it's insane. I, I know how heartbreaking it is. But on the other hand, it's your fault too because she had no supervision. Yeah, yeah, you were looking through blinds and, and stuff. Yeah, you were looking and watching your kid. But the creepy part about it is, it, as a parent, you should have been out watching your kid. As a parent, you should have been like on, on the porch or something, or or something like if you saw some creepy man coming or something, or or a creepy woman looking like they by snatch your kid or something, you could you could act and grab her, not checking your blind, then then going back what you're doing, then come back to see what she's doing. As a magical Wait. little fairy, Faye was known for her infectious smile, right. boundless I'm energy, home. and Do kind heart. Be she loved make everyone and home. everything, always wanting to make new friends and spread happiness wherever she went. Faye's zest for life was evident in everything she did, from her enthusiastic participation in school activities to her playful antics at she home. Selena it. often she spoke of Faye's it. habit of complimenting life. strangers, she a trait that it. endeared her to many she in the community. This school, resonates in a really creepy way when you realize school, who one of her school, new friends even, was. You even, even have a, a man, a boyfriend, driving. She ain't spending none of that because of dumb things the parent did. 
Faye was a first grader at Springdale Elementary School, where she was known for her enthusiasm for learning oh, and oh, her so ability she to make friends elementary. easily. Her curiosity about the world started. around her was insatiable, wow. and she approached like each she new day at school with excitement and, and she, wonder. She at home, Faye was the center of her family's world. She loved spending time with her parents, playing games, watching movies, and going on small adventures in their neighborhood. Faye had a particular fondness for animals and would often beg her parents to adopt every stray cat or dog they encountered. Her room was filled with stuffed animals, each with its own name and backstory that Faye had lovingly created. The sweat like family, including Faye's parents and extended family members, were a tight-knit unit. They enjoyed family gatherings, backyard barbecues, and holiday celebrations where Faye's laughter and energy were always at the center. When Faye disappeared, this close-knit family was devastated. The community rallied around them, offering support, organizing search parties, and keeping vigil as the days passed without news of Faye's whereabouts. As the search intensified, the Swetlick family found themselves thrust into a nightmare they could have never imagined. And now they face the unthinkable prospect of never seeing their beloved Faye again. On top of that, Faye's dad, Chad, was treated as a suspect as he was separated from Selena and lived at another address. For one, for one. I, I, can't, I can't lie. That, that might be a suspect. You might, you might be a one. You might be the one who actually, actually killed his own daughter because he had one. After it was proven he was at home at the time of Faye's disappearance, he was cleared of all charges. But you can imagine what this does to you when you're yeah, already you can, desperate can to find like, your like, missing daughter. You can, like, bro, you've been separated from Within your wife Within hours for a long of the 911 so, call, more so than 50 law enforcement officers, firefighters, and first responders were on the scene. Officers notified the Casey you're Command father, staff, including myself, some, and all of us like immediately that, responded to right? Churchill Heights and began asking from for assistance from other local agencies. By 12 o'clock in the afternoon. Recognizing the gravity uh -huh. of the situation, the FBI had been contacted and requested the to FBI. assist. The FBI! The CIA! Checking oh, on the those CIA old security cameras, that's too. something that uh, we're already old. doing. Certainly you we'll be know, going it, it uh, be continue to continue to go right door to door and, and then yeah. even revisit yeah, some of these doors a second time. Case Department of Public Safety Chief Byron Snellgrove, who would become a central figure in the search for Faye, described the initial response. At 6 p.m., uh -huh. Having so far not located Faye, both SLED and the FBI were contacted and immediate assistance was requested. Every minute counted, and everybody knew it. In the case of missing children, the more time passes, the more the odds stack up against them. Searchers worked tirelessly through the night, calling Faye's name and meticulously combing through every possible hiding place. The sound of helicopters overheard became a constant backdrop as aerial searches were conducted. The scale of the operation was unprecedented for the small city of Case, with resources pouring in from neighboring counties and even other states. Officers searched the 280 homes in Churchill Heights and interviewed their residents. Roadblocks were set up at all entrances to the neighborhood, with officers stopping and questioning everyone entering or leaving the area. Searchers checked every pool, creek, culvert, manhole, trash can, shed, and any other structure where a young girl could potentially be. But it would take three days to find Faye's lifeless body. And we specifically asked that the residents of Churchill Heights here in Casey, who have cameras such as surveillance cameras around their houses, uh, uh, doorbell cameras, ring doorbell cameras, anything like that, anything that records, and have any type of recording on their devices between the time of 2 and 5 p.m. yesterday, please call us at that number. Let us know that you have that recording. We'll come get it, look at it, and it may be key in us proceeding with this case. Indeed, in today's world of ubiquitous home security systems, this request was crucial in finding Faye. And the community's response to this request was overwhelming. Nearly 300 tips had been called in, and dozens of doorbell cameras were 
were offered to Dude, the local PD. Oh, the breakdown has, in the case some, came on the morning of, of Thursday, February 13th, three days after Faye's disappearance. Oh. As a part of their thorough investigation, officers were following sanitation trucks through the neighborhood, methodically combing through each oh. trash can oh. as it was empty. Oh. At approximately 7.59. A -A. Officers searched through a trash you. can near the 602 Piccadilly Square. At approximately 10 a.m., a trash can near 602 Piccadilly Square was emptied, and as our officers went through it, um, they found a couple of items that were of significant importance. One was a child's polka dot boot, and the second was a soup ladle that had freshly dug dirt in it. The polka dot boot matched the description of what Faye had been wearing when she disappeared, and the dirt covered ladle suggested recent digging activity. 47 seconds later, I located the body of Faye Sweat. The news sent shockwaves. Hold on. So you tell me for wrong case had opened up where he's covering about childhood safety and the need for community to be to come together. It's truly for all of us to be visible and look out for one another's child, children. That's not just be shocked by the news, but also motivation to take action in our own uh, neighborhood. So, so what, what I was reading that you were saying is that we got to be cautious and take action for one another's child. Because, yes. There are parents that actually think they're doing a good job, but really not. Like, her mother wasn't really doing a good job. Waves through the community and beyond. What had started as a missing person case, fueled by hope and determination, had tragically become a homicide investigation. The realization that Faye had been so close to home all along, hidden in a shallow grave in the very neighborhood where hundreds had been searching for days, was a cruel twist that compounded the tragedy. As word spread of the discovery, a palpable sense of grief settled over Case. The hopes and prayers of an entire community no. had been dashed, replaced by sorrow and a burning desire. Replaced by sorrow and a burning desire for answers and justice. Who was responsible for this heinous act? How could this happen in a seemingly safe neighborhood? And perhaps most pressingly, was there still a threat to the community? These questions would soon be answered in a way that would shock the community even further as the investigation quickly zeroed in on a suspect who had been hiding in plain sight all along. The investigation into Faye's murder took a dramatic turn almost immediately after the discovery of her body. As investigators were processing the crime scene where Faye was found, another call came in that would prove to be intricately linked to the case. Officers were alerted to a report of a man bleeding on the back patio of 602 Piccadilly Square, the very same address where the crucial evidence had been found in the trash can earlier that morning. By sheer coincidence. When officers arrived at the scene, they found a lifeless man on the back patio. He was later identified as 30-year-old Cody Scott Taylor, a neighbor who lived just 150 feet from Faye's home. The proximity of Taylor's residence to both Faye's home and the location where her body was found immediately raised suspicions among investigators. As investigators processed both crime scenes, the area where Faye's body was found Interestingly <coughs> enough, Cody had given officers permission to search his home just two days prior, but they didn't find anything incriminating at the time. We have concluded that Faye's death was a homicide and took place within only a few hours after she was abducted. Through meticulous investigation, including analysis of surveillance footage and witness statements, authorities pieced together a timeline of events. 
It all began on February 10th at approximately 3.45 p.m. when Faye was last seen playing in her front yard. For the next two days from February 10th to February 12th, extensive search efforts continued throughout the neighborhood and surrounding areas. A crucial point in the timeline occurred on February 12th when police interviewed Cody Taylor at his apartment. At this time, nothing suspicious was found and Taylor was not considered a suspect. The early hours of February 13th marked a sinister turn of events. At approximately 1 a.m., surveillance footage captured by someone later believed to be Taylor, moving in the wooded area where Faye's body would later be found. It was then that Cody disposed of Faye's body. So to Faye's loved one's shock, her little body was inside Cody's home when the officers went through the house and found nothing. Just six hours later, around 7 a.m. on February 13th, Taylor was seen on camera at a local Walmart purchasing soil and fertilizer. This seemingly mundane act would later be recognized as a crucial piece of evidence. The timeline reached its tragic conclusion later that morning. At 10.30 a.m., Faye's body was discovered by Chief Snellgrove in the wooded area near her home. Shortly after this devastating find, uh -huh. Taylor's body was found on his back patio, bringing a shocking end to the search and investigation. Oh. No, 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 ain't no, ain't no way, ain't no way her life or body being your that patio. No, 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 and you been right there. In the act, right? And you've been right there in the scene. You've been right there in the action. You've been right there in front of everybody in cold play. You've been right there in front of everybody bloody, bloody face. You've been standing right there in front of everybody bloody face. No one person found out it was just you. Oh, you dirty bastard. Oh, no, 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 no. Lock this man up now. Uh, the man, the man you go to jail for twenty, maybe, maybe, maybe I'll say four years because this man go go and burn a six year old. Who does that? Investigators delved deeper into the case. The evidence pointing to Cody Taylor as face killer became became overwhelming. The first and perhaps most damning piece of evidence was the presence of Taylor's DNA under Faye's fingernails. More forensic evidence was found on the ladle recovered from Taylor's trash. Both Faye's and Taylor's DNA were present on this item, corroborating the theory that it had been used to bury Faye's body. Inside Taylor's apartment, investigators made another crucial discovery. A black laundry bag was found containing traces of both Faye's and Taylor's DNA. DNA. He took her life from? and then kept her in a trash bag until he decided to dump her in the forest, also like trash. Cody Scott. You kept her in the trash bag until you thought what were you going to do with her body? You have this plan now. You have this plan now. You have, you have a list and step by step by step on the list. 30 years old at the time of the crime, presented a complex and troubling profile. Those who knew him described Taylor as a loner with a consistently negative outlook on life. He was not well known in the community, keeping to himself and rarely engaging with neighbors. This reclusive behavior, while not criminal in and of itself, allowed Taylor to avoid scrutiny and fly under the radar of community awareness. Taylor yeah. also identified himself as asexual who, who and an incel. While these identities are not inherently problematic, in like Taylor's case, they may have contributed to feelings of isolation anything. and resentment you know, towards like, others. This is the Facebook page of 30-year-old Cody Taylor, who was found dead at his Churchill Heights residence Thursday. His profile says he was a manager at Jimmy John's. Taylor's educational background included a period of study at the University oh, of South Carolina oh, oh. at don't Columbia, don't where man. he pursued oh, mathematics. Yeah. However, there's no what, record of what him happened? graduating, and some sources indicated he may have dropped out in 2009. At the time of the incident, Taylor was employed at a local Wingstop restaurant, working alongside his roommate. His roommate and co-workers later reported that Taylor had expressed feelings of depression and suicidal thoughts in the past. Despite these concerning aspects of his personality and mental state, Taylor had managed to avoid any significant interactions with law enforcement. This lack of prior offenses made him an unlikely suspect in the eyes of many. What makes this case particularly chilling 
is how little Faye's family or anyone in the neighborhood knew about Taylor. Who knows how long Cody Taylor had been harboring unspeakable fantasies without anyone knowing. The profile of Cody Taylor serves as a stark reminder that appearances can be deceiving. Behind the facade of a quiet neighbor can lurk unimaginable dangers. His case reminds us of the urgency of community engagement and awareness, as well as the need for better mental health support and intervention. The case means their mental health, their issue, their therapy, like, bro, like, y'all never really talk to this man, like, you see this man being alone, he never commuting with the neighbor or nothing. Dang. That's like some desperate person or or somebody who just, just don't like talking. I don't, I don't know. So normally, when, when someone who always been alone for a long time, sometimes they go out and talk to your um, neighbors and stuff. I I never seen no one who be that down, that instant you like, oh, I want to go murder someone. I don't know. Also, Faye's parents couldn't shake off that one, one thought. Perhaps they should have gotten to know their neighbors better. But here's the sad yeah, truth. Yeah, y'all should story joins a long list of cases where individuals Boy. who committed horrific crimes were often described by neighbors and acquaintances as normal or even kind prior to their actions being revealed. John Wayne Gacy, Gacy, infamously known as the killer clown, was a respected businessman and active community member who performed at children's parties, dressed as a clown. His involvement in local politics and charity work created an image of a caring, community-minded individual. Yet, behind this carefully constructed facade, Gacy had murdered 33 young men and boys. The contrast between his public persona and his private atrocities shocked the nation when his crimes were finally uncovered. Another haunting example is Dennis Rader known as the BTK killer. Raider was a family man, a Boy Scout leader, and an active church member in his community. He was seen as a pillar of society, someone who could be trusted and respected. However, for decades, Raider terrorized Wichita, Kansas, and killed 10 people before finally being caught. His ability to maintain a normal, even admirable public life while committing heinous crimes in secret demonstrates the chilling duality that some criminals can maintain. Jeffrey Dahmer is only there to top the list. Described by neighbors as quiet and polite, Dahmer's unassuming demeanor bellied the horrific nature of his crimes. He was responsible for the murder and disappearance of 17 men and boys, all while maintaining an outwardly normal life. Dahmer's case, like others, highlights how effective some individuals can be at compartmentalizing their lives. So how can we balance the need for awareness and caution with the desire for a trusting, open community? Experts say that we can start by fostering strong community bonds while staying aware. Often, in hindsight, there are small signs or incidents that, if recognized and investigated, might have led to earlier intervention. Faye's story, like like others before it, also highlights the need for better mental health support in communities. While mental illness does not excuse criminal behavior, better access to mental health resources and a reduction in the stigma surrounding mental health treatment could potentially prevent some individuals from reaching the point of committing violent acts. It is with extremely heavy hearts that we are announcing that we have found a body that the coroner has has identified as Faye Marine Sweat. The loss of Faye Sweatlick has had a profound and lasting impact on her family, the case community, and all those involved in the case. In the years following the tragedy, Faye's family has worked tirelessly to keep her memory alive and to create positive change in her honor. Selena Collins, Faye's mother, has become an advocate for child safety and community awareness. She has spoken at schools and community events, sharing Faye's story and emphasizing the importance of vigilance and kindness. The family has also established the Faye Marie Swetlick Foundation, 
which focuses on supporting child safety initiatives and providing resources for families affected by similar tragedies. The family has also worked with local schools to implement buddy benches on playgrounds, inspired by Faye's friendly nature and desire to ensure no child feels alone. While these efforts have helped the family channel their grief into positive actions, the pain of their loss remains. One of the most frustrating aspects of the Faye Sweatlick case is the lack of traditional justice. When Cody Taylor took his own life, he robbed Faye's family and the community of the opportunity. <laughs> Thank you.